This, obviously, is a car alternator. It's actually from a Nissan Micra. Now, if we have a look at how this is made up, we can see the breakdown of it. An idea of what it looks like but here's the actual machine itself where I split it to be into pieces now inside here we've got a rectifier unit right there and that takes the outputs from this the stator and then rectifies them into DC so we get DC output now I've rewired the brushes for a couple of wires here but the brushes hit those slip rings there what that means is the brushes are feeding a constant DC to the rotor coil so that rotor coil is a magnet always on and always in the same direction. Now this differs from motors and other generators in that normally you see the coil in that direction. On these things the coil is wound around like that. And that's the coil, it's just a coil sitting in there like that and that means that that is permanently north and that's permanently south. So the top of these are north and south. Now we've done this before when we used a speaker magnet, you can bend that magnetic field. You bend that magnetic field by using a shoe with a bend in it. And these are called crab claws and they look like that. There's two of them. So that's them there. And we have two of them like that, taking that permanent north and bending it round here, taking that permanent south and bending it round here. So we see north, south, north, south on the crab claw poles and not on the top, even though we're feeding the current into a coil, so we have a permanent north and a permanent south. That's really unusual and kind of really exciting as well, because it allows us to do stuff. Now very often when people suggest turning this into a brushless generator, what they're talking about is replacing the stator with some magnets, and you see them drilling into the crab claw, so they'll drill in about here or so, put a magnet in, and then they've got all the problems with balancing. In fact, they didn't need to do that. What they could do is just drill in the top, and as long as one's pointing north and one's pointing south, the crab claw will take care of bending the field and making sure that we get north and south on the poles. It also means that just like we did in the previous video, we get this, the speaker magnet, and that speaker magnet has a north face here and a south face here, and we do that with it, then the crab claws will bend those poles around. So even though that magnet there has a top north and a top south, it makes no difference. It'll bend it round so that we get the north and the south on the poles where we want them to be, because the crab claw is bending the magnetic field. That's absolutely awesome if you think about it. Now the strength of that field in that coil is dependent on the number of amps that we're pumping through. Now remember, because they're slip rings and not a commutator, it's always got the same direction. So if we up the amps, what happens is that magnetic field gets stronger. If we down the amps, the field gets weaker. The stronger that field is, and as it spins through the stator, this bunch of wires here, it generates current for us. Now, if I take this bunch of wires apart, and what we have is our stator all by itself. You'll see it's just coils. It's coils with three output wires. Those three wires that are output are our three phase. So if we do that and make this a permanent magnet arrangement like that, what we have in fact got is a brushless three-phase generator. So it's really easy to turn these things into a three-phase generator just by doing those two adaptions. And that leads them to be very adaptable for what it is you want them to do. Now the limitation on this really is it's from a car. So it's meant to spin at sort of 3000 RPM or so and, and that's where it functions best. But mostly that's to do with this wire in here. And you can find people swapping these wires out for thinner wires to rewind it so that it becomes a higher voltage generator. Because remember, voltage is proportional to the speed that it turns at, the strength of the magnetic field that it's turning through, and the length of the wire that's turning through there. So we make thinner wire, we get a longer length of wire that we can bang in there, and so we get a higher voltage. Okay, so I've got it set up. Here's the meter reading volts, here's my power supply, and I've got nothing going through that rotor at the moment, so it's really easy to spin, because the only thing I have to overcome is the friction of the bearings, which of course is very low. Now you might notice that when I spin it, 
we actually get a reading there of a few millivolts and that's because there's residual magnetism in the rotor and we'll talk about that later but if I put a bit of power on that and pump that power up what we'll see is the voltage go up in generation we're about five volts but what you can feel is an increase in the torque that at 12 volts you can see I'm producing a couple of volts here but I'm having to really turn that now so that's really significant because as we increase the strength of the magnetic field in the rotor which we do by increasing the voltage we increase the torque requirement to turn that rotor but we also increase the volt output of the stator now that means we can make this adjusting because remember in order to turn that, the torque is the turning force required. That turning force has to be available in the wind. So we've got a high torque setting on here. We're using permanent magnets, for instance. There has to be enough force in the wind to turn against those permanent magnets. And if the force isn't there, those magnets won't turn. If we can reduce the torque requirement for low winds, of course we can get this to generate in low winds. As the wind speed picks up, when we can increase the voltage to the rotor, increasing the torque requirement, and then also increasing the generation. So that generation can be linked directly to the wind speed. You might want to measure the wind speed with something like an onomometer and control the voltage, say, with an Arduino. But you would have then a device that could set itself to the wind speed and generate in a whole range of wind speeds instead of having a low wind speed where it needs to generate. Now, equally, if the wind speed is too great, you can set that torque so strong that even a strong wind can't turn it. So it will effectively be a brake. So it's a, an adjusting system that can adjust to wind speed and take low wind speeds and protect itself in high wind speed, which I think is really exciting. Now, I pointed this out to you with the residual magnetism as we turn it. Okay, so it's a bit harder to demonstrate this because of the time requirement, but let's see if we can get the sense of this. What I've done is I've taken the rotor wires and connect them to stator wires. So the residual magnetism in the rotor will make the stator generate. The stator will now feed that power back into the rotor, and that will mean that the rotor magnet gets stronger. And so there'll be more generation, and so the field will get stronger, and so on and so on. And we get a positive feedback mechanism based on the rotation speed of the rotor. It needs something a bit more permanent than me spinning it by hand just to test the torque. So I've put a bit of string around it and we're going to pull that and see if we can see that on the millivolt reading. Now it's kind of difficult to see, but you could see that it went up to about three millivolts. And remember, when we were doing that by hand, we got a millivolt or so. What we really need to do is put this in a solid, uh, in a uh, system where it's continuing to turn. There we go. Okay. There's an awful it's... lot more to them than you might think. If we pull up out the crab claws and put a permanent magnet in that rotor, we can turn it into a brushless generator. If we remove the rectifier and take the three coil output separately, we can make it three phase. If we control the voltage going into the rotor, then we can actually use it for, for braking and self-control and we can feed it straight back in and use it as a feedback mechanism so that we can control, let the thing control its own speed. Now, you might think we're using power to power the rotor and therefore what's the point? And we are using power to power the rotor. But because we're also spinning it through that field, there's always more power out than we're actually going to put in. So if you use that voltage control mechanism, you might want to attach a supercapacitor or two to it to be able to control that and change the strength of the magnetic field. So quite a lot of things you can do with these that actually get quite fancy and quite tricky and really quite impressive. So I thought I'd go through that because as I say, there is more to these things than you think and we'll be using some of those in later videos. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.